Well, boys, howdy. Today, August 2nd, 2020, is the day. Today is the day. Today, Today is the day that I upgrade from AM FM cassette. I've been using cassette adapters for forever. So if you don't know, I've been driving a 2003 F350 Super Duty with a six liter power stroke in it as my daily driver work truck for a number of years. And today, after so many years, of desiring Bluetooth connectivity. I'm upgrading from the old cassette adapter to a nice fancy new Kenwood. Mmm. Actually, uh, didn't cheap out on this one. There's plenty of uh, cheap head units on Amazon for, you know, $50, maybe even less for some of them, and uh, with surprisingly good reviews. But uh, I, I kind of like my music, I like my sound quality, so I went ahead and spent a little bit of money uh, I was able to find this baby for about 220 bucks, I think, is what I paid uh, with free next day shipping from Best Buy. So we're going to hurry up and get this thing rolling in here, hopefully. And would you believe that with all the mechanical work I've done and uh, working on cars and stuff since I was a, pretty young, I've never once put a head unit in. Never, never once. I've wired up speakers. I've wired up subs. I've never, ever put a head unit in. So first, uh, first go at this, and I'm going to do it all for thousands of people to watch so wish me luck i hope you guys can hear me all right the neighbor's over here whacking his weeds about as loud as he can so in addition to the head unit i did snag over from amazon a rear view camera so this was uh 25 dollars made in china you know cheapo depot uh i don't think you can actually find an american made one of these at least not that i've seen i'm sure you probably could somewhere but uh any name brand one is just outrageously expensive uh, this is 25 bucks so if it works for six months and I gotta get a new one I'm not gonna be that mad but uh, we'll be installing that too and see how that goes and see how it works so like I said I've never pulled a head unit or installed a head unit or anything like that I've pulled some kind out but I've never pulled this kind out so I'm no different than you guys when I don't know how to do something I hurry up and jump on the YouTube and uh, within a couple seconds I was able to find somebody saying that you could pull out these type of head units with nothing more than some heavy coat hanger uh, you jam it in these slots and there's a special tool for this but I don't have one so you jam it down in these slots here and it's probably gonna take two hands for me to do this but uh, jam those guys in there and now you push them away from each other and pull out the radio at the same time so we'll give that a shot here Ah, I'm like pushing them down too far in. Yeah, I can hear them letting up now. Need a third hand. There's one side. There we go. Look at that. Nothing but coat hangers. Worked out great. All righty. So on the back of our unit here, we've got our main harness in, and then we've got our AM FM antenna here. Just pull this guy out, I think. Grrr. Need two hands for everything. My lord, George. Ugh. I cannot get this thing to release. There we go. Good golly. Looking on the back of the radio here, we have this plastic bracket. Uh, see, that helped stabilize the radio by sliding over top of this rail in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a metal rail in here. And that uh, plastic would slide over that thing and engage on there, holding the radio steady. So we might need to take this off and install it on the new one if it's uh, if it'll fit. So with the old one out, let's go ahead and pull the new one out of the box. Get a look at that. Let's 
I've already been in here and rummaged around through the directions a bit. Don't worry, I didn't read them. Never break the man code like that. There she is. What a beaut. Look at the deer. So I'm trying to stick this unit in here, and it looks like I'm gonna have to do just a little bit of cutting on the dash to make it fit. It's about a, yeah, maybe a, maybe a quarter inch, maybe three eighths thicker than the uh, the old one. So there's just these little flanges here on the plastic. We're gonna go ahead and cut those out in style. Getting a little frisky there with it. Gotta watch I don't whack my uh, vacuum control for the heater here. Now that side went perfectly. battery died right in the middle of this great well that's all right I got some extras here a little too much throttle too much I think we got her good enough there Starting to understand why people pay people to put these things in. I always thought they were idiots. Well, that's the bottom side. Let me see if it'll fit now. I want to keep it a nice tight fit. If I don't have to take the top, I won't. But it looks like I do. Definitely going to have to thin that one out at least. So I'm actually going to do this the slow way with a big file here. Uh... This is probably what's going to do most of the holding on the stereo here after it's in, so I don't want to take too much, too quick. So the file will let us hit it nice and slow here. Take a little extra time, but it's worth doing right, I guess. And uh, I'm sure if you're an audio expert, <laughs> you're just cringing and laughing. I'm just using what I got and tackling things the way I know how. I think we're close. A little more. All right, so after a good half an hour of sitting there playing around and filing it down, I finally got it to where it slides in there nice. Uh, and I might go ahead and order the trim ring that goes on here, but I'm thinking it might be too big. I'm pretty sure it is, actually. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this, but this edge right here, you can see it's got a good little gap on this side, and it can kind of move around a little bit. So another thing I learned from the YouTubes was uh, how to override the park sensor feature on these stereos. Uh, if you're familiar with like touchscreen stereos, they typically don't let you like go through many of the menus and stuff like that. 
uh, unless the vehicle's in park, which is something most people generally don't like. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable going through a menu at a stoplight or something. I'm not going to be surfing through the settings while I'm driving. I have no reason to be. But anyway, to simply override that, all you got to do is take your park wire here, which is this green guy, and put a little ring terminal on the end of it. And uh, we're going to stick it right there on the screw and just ground that wire out to the body of the, uh, to the radio. All right, now I'm mounting the, uh, the microphone here for the hands-free audio. Having trouble focusing on it. I don't know if you can see it. It's right, right here in front of my hand. There you go. So I tucked the wire up into the headliner here. I took the uh, cover off the, the column on this side. And now I'm dropping it down through the dash. I'll go ahead and pull the slack out of it here if I can. Oh, if it's not caught on something. There we go. Yeah, and I'll tie that up down here in the corner and reinstall this uh, cover on the column or on the uh, the post here. Sun is just killing you guys. All right, so I've Googled and Googled trying to find the right diagram to show what all these wires do on the stock harness, and I can't find it. So uh, it's taking a little bit longer. I'm having to sit here and probe all the wires to see what they do. So like right now, I just this one's constant power. Let's see, we got our 12 volts there, and then I got key on power here. I just found. So. I'll have to sit there and do that and uh, get them all figured out and start wiring them in. Ken would obviously uh, supply a good diagram for their harness here, so it all it all should go together pretty easy. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I hate wiring, so this is just something that takes me a little while. Uh, but I'm getting better at it. All right, I got enough of the wiring hooked up here that we should be able to plug the radio in and just test it and make sure it turns on and everything. So I've got the always on power and then I've got key on ignition power and I got a ground so we'll just go ahead and plug this harness into the back of the radio now and hopefully it turns on that Woohoo Nice Look at that, we got Pandora, Spotify, could put XM on here. This is fancy. Got our camera input. We'll have to hook that up yet. All right. Well, let's go ahead and finish wiring up the speakers, and we can slide this thing into place and then hook our rear view camera up. So I'm getting ready to install this backup camera here, and... Uh, you know, it's supposed to be waterproof and everything, and it looks fairly reasonably waterproof looking at the encasement and stuff here. <clears throat> so right here on the back of the camera where the wire goes in, you can see there's like a little bit of gap around that wire. So the way you probably mount this thing, you know, the, the wire is going to act like a travel path for water to just run right down inside of the body of this thing and cause issues. So what I got here, I got some of this uh, liquid electrical tape. This stuff works real good at sealing up little holes like that. It's pretty thin, can get into places. So we'll just give this thing a good sloppy coating on the back here and hopefully get her sealed up. Give us a little better shot at making this thing last a while. That was a lot. 
I think the last time I used this stuff, it was pretty cold out. I couldn't really get it to move too easy, and it's pretty hot out today. It's running all over the place on me. We'll just let that sit for a while like that and try to dry. I think that drill bit's about pooched. Now we gotta try and cram these wires through this hole. I drilled a half inch, I didn't want to go any bigger. Look at this stinking powder coat from North Star. Holds up great, doesn't it? Oh, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. I'm gonna shave the ends of the connector off with a knife. Got this big rubber coating on there, doesn't do anything. These aren't weatherproof connections by any means. I don't know why they did this. We're gonna make them weatherproof though. Maybe I can get that through there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's gonna go. Little wiggle, little wiggle. There we go. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna put a grommet in here so that we don't wear through this wire. Part of me says that it'll never last that long anyways, but you know, we'll try. Turns out my little grommets are uh, too thin to work with this. This is like, uh, I don't know, 5 16 plate, too thick for the grommet, so that's out. Let's get this thing mounted. Almost need longer bolts now. I don't have any, so these will have to do. Need more hands. Nah, we don't need longer bolts. These are plenty. Center to you, center to me. Yep, better not go too crazy with those bolts, end up shattering this plastic. So, there we go. Peel our little fuzzy lens off here, lens cover. There we go. Now I'll just have to run the wires up to the cab and plumb them into the stereo. And uh, you got to catch a power off your reverse light here to get power to the camera and the LEDs. So we'll do that. See how she works. All right. I think I got everything hooked up that I want to get hooked up. Go ahead and slide this baby in here. Now I did do a few things different uh, from the instructions. <clears throat> the instructions on the camera have you tying into a reverse light for your power so you only get power when you're in reverse. Uh, I didn't want to do that because I think every once in a while it would be nice to be able to turn the camera on while you're going down the road. You know, you can kind of see your load sometimes from these rear view cameras. It's nice, I've driven trucks before where you can just hit the cam button and then you can see what's behind you even though you're going down the road. Uh, <clears throat> so what I did, I tied it into a running light or uh, a marker light rather so it won't be on all the time 
but if I need it, I just got to flip on the flip on the lights and it'll turn the camera on and I can hit the cam button and I'll be able to see what I'm doing. I don't have it set up to where I put it in reverse and it automatically comes on because the only time I really plan on using this for backing up is if I need to back up up against something or I'm hooking up to a trailer because uh, it's pretty nice to be able to see the hitch when you're hooking up to a trailer. So I think it's all all hooked up right. We'll go ahead and fire it up and see if we can't get some tunes out of this thing. I do have to do all the setup yet. I'm not going to bother you guys with that. But let's see here. I bet you we can get some sweet, some sweet diesel creek tunes going here You know what my favorite one is? Comment down below and tell me what your favorite song that I use here is. Uh, I guess you guys probably don't know the titles to a lot of them. But this one here is my favorite one. This is Ghost Riders or Diesel Creek. Oh, yeah. So I know there's probably glare on the screen and hard for you guys to see, but we're going to go ahead and try our backup camera now. That ain't good. No signal. Hmm. So, after about 45 minutes or an hour of troubleshooting this uh, rear view camera issue, uh, here I had the connections backwards, and I'm pretty sure I have them correct according to the directions, but when I reversed them, magically worked. Check it out now. Dang, how about that, huh? And we got these uh, parking assistance grid lines. Probably going to turn those off because I hate those things. They're never accurate, right? Uh, and these ones, because I don't have the sensors, excuse me, in the steering wheel, uh, they're not going to adjust the way they should anyways. They're just going to be straight. So I'll just get rid of those things. And uh, basically all I want this for is to be able to connect to a trailer easier by myself. So now we got that figured out. Pretty happy with the radio. Seems to be working reasonably well. And, uh, yeah. Sounds, sounds pretty good, too. Real happy with the sound quality. I don't feel like I lost anything over the factory radio. Still a lot of, uh, a lot of things for me to figure out yet. Play around and adjust this thing. But, uh, seems to be working all right. So overall, I'm very happy with the radio. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap here on the edges, uh, and, but there's none on the top and bottom basically. So the trim ring that they sell for this head unit would not fit this. I would end up cutting it up anyway. So what I think I'm gonna do is find some pieces of like quarter inch fuel hose or silicone rubber, surgical tubing, something like that, and jam that in there. And that should help wedge the radio in there 
dampen the vibration a little bit but it's already a pretty snug fit to get it where it's at so i really don't think i'm gonna have too much trouble with it moving there's basically nothing holding it in there but friction so that's why i was figuring you know those little pieces of rubber jammed in on the sides would uh help clean up the look of it a little bit plus keep it from moving so maybe i'll uh show that in a future video if i get that done but probably just gonna let it bounce around a little bit and see what happens so guys, that's the video. I know it's a little bit off topic and a little bit out of the blue, but if you like it, go ahead, hit the thumbs up button and I will catch you on the next one. Later.